10 rights every driver has in a traffic stop. Now, most of us have been pulled over by the police at some point. In fact, most of us, that's the only encounter we ever have with the police is during a traffic stop, which is precisely the reason you need to know every right you have under the Constitution, particularly the rights you're not aware of when a police officer pulls you over. You have the right to say no. It's amazing to me the number of people that admit to stuff when police officers approach them. I see it all the time. Someone gets pulled over for a traffic stop. The officer walks up and says, hey man, what are you doing? And I see people say things like, oh man, I've got a little marijuana in the car. I hope you don't hold it against me. Or they just start talking and talking. You have the right to close your mouth and not interact with the officer. Don't say so much. But even when you do have this interaction with the officer, here's a few things to know. Number one, they have a right to check out your license. They have the right to be able to make sure that you are who you say you are, and they can run your background to make sure you don't have any active traffic warrants or other warrants. Now, that can make you a little nervous, and you can be sitting there for a little while, but they have a right to detain you for a reasonable period of time until they make that determination. Now, if things start to escalate and they ask you to step out of the car, at first the temptation is to say, I'm not going to do that, but if they are able to articulate a reasonable basis for how their officer safety might be in play here. They can ask you to get out. They can even pat down to make sure you don't have any weapons. But now this is where we have to be very careful. If the officer starts asking you questions about if there's any weapons or drugs in the car, you don't have to answer that question and you can affirmatively stand on your right to remain silent and invoke that right. The reality of it is you can say no to them searching your vehicle. They will sometimes giving you a hard, give you a hard time by saying, what do you have to hide? Why don't you let me search it? Or you know I'm just going to call the drug dog out. But here's the reality. They're not going to be able to hold you for an unreasonable period of time waiting for a drug dog to come out. And you don't have to have a good reason to ask the officer not to search your vehicle. You have a constitutional right to say no. So of all, above and beyond all other things, remember, say no. Number two, you're not legally required to tell the officer about your immigration status, where you're going, where you came from, or what you're doing. If you wish to exercise your right to remain silent, you must say so out loud and verbalize that. Otherwise, remember, lying to the police can be a crime, but choosing to stand and invoke your right to remain silent is never a crime. Number three, ask if you are free to leave. Now, what if an officer holds you for quite a while? Let's say you're sitting there, they come and they ask for your driver's license. They try to start asking you some questions. Then they check your warrants, right? You used to exercise your right to remain silent. Then after some period of time, you're going to want to know what's the next step. Here's what you can say. You can very easily say, officer, am I free to leave? Now, if he says you're free to leave, do so calmly, politely, drive away. Don't say anything else. But if he says no, you need to remind the officers you are continuing to exercise your right to remain silent and not answer any questions. At some point, that officer is now going to have to articulate a legal basis to extend the traffic stop beyond this time. Once the traffic stop is complete, and let's say the officer wrote you a ticket or he gave you a warning, it's very common for the officer to now ask you, hey man, do you mind if I just search your vehicle for a couple of minutes? I'm just checking to see and make sure everything's okay. And we're going to talk about some of the techniques they use here in a minute, but I want you to understand something. At this point, you can absolutely say no, because the basis for the original traffic stop is now complete. He has no legal basis to hold you any longer. What you can say very politely is, officer, I do not consent to you searching my vehicle. Am I free to go? If the officer starts giving you a hard time saying, hey man, if you didn't do anything wrong, why would you refuse the opportunity for me to search your vehicle? Are you trying to hide something from me? Remember, you don't have to have a good explanation for why you're exercising your constitutional rights. You can very politely say, Officer, like I mentioned, I do not give you consent to search my vehicle. Am I free to leave? By the way, if you do give them consent to search your vehicle, I want you to know something. You are now giving carte blanche authority to this officer to do whatever he wants for as how long as he wants to your vehicle. So what ends up happening is there's an old saying that consent cures all. Once you tell this officer, yeah, sure, man, you can search my car, get ready. They can tear up your vehicle. They can start looking through everything. They have no obligation to return the vehicle in the same condition that it was prior to the search. So you will be sitting there for quite a while. And depending upon the officer you're dealing with, you are going to significantly extend the length of this stop. Number four, answer only the questions you have to answer. What do we mean by this? 
Well, listen, it's always important to invoke your right to remain silent. But when you get pulled over for a traffic violation or in a traffic stop, there are certain things you must do when a police officer approaches you. Particularly in each state has its own jurisdictional and legal requirements. But I do want you to know in most states, you're required to give your name. You're required to give your driver's license and or date of birth. The officer can require you to provide certain information to determine whether or not you have an active warrant. And that is going to be something you need to say if they ask for it. Now remember, many people, if they have a traffic warrant, they're tempted to just say the wrong information or they're tempted to give some variation of their name or some friend of theirs name. Remember, in almost every state, a failure to identify and giving false information, that is an arrestable crime. So if you start giving the wrong information, don't be surprised if you end up being arrested. Although you should check your state's laws. For example, in Texas, it is a crime to fail to provide who you are and identify yourself to an officer when you're pulled over for a traffic stop. Now it's a class C misdemeanor, okay? That can be a basis for the officer to now even investigate further if you don't provide that information. But if you lie about who you are, that's an actual arrestable offense where you could spend time in jail. Say nothing before you say something. This is going to be rule number five. So let's talk about that for a second. Look, we've already identified there are certain things you must say. Okay, you must identify who you are, provide your license. Certain states also require you to provide registration. But outside of that, it's better you say nothing than to say something. Here is the technique police officers use. They very frequently will start small talk with you. Hey man, what's going on? You have a good evening tonight? Yeah, let me, let me check out your driver's license. Where are you headed, man? What you been doing? Having a good evening? Check out the weather. They'll just start small talking with you. You don't have to be rude to the police, but it's really important this is a technique the police are using in order to get you to start talking. So you can be nice and polite, but at the end of the day, it's better you say nothing than you say something. Refusing to engage in small talk with a police officer is not a crime, and you can't be arrested for it. However, if you start opening your mouth, and now the officer starts beginning to get suspicious about some of the things you're saying, even if it's not a reasonable basis to be suspicious, they could try to use their hunch as a basis to now claim they should be able to get you out of that vehicle and start a more in-depth investigation. In fact, this is exactly how police officers are trained in the academy to get people to incriminate themselves. For example, one of the things they will do is they'll say, hey man, where are you headed from? Were you just coming from the restaurant back there? It's a great place, isn't it? I love their bar. Did you have anything to drink tonight? And they'll say it in a way that doesn't sound like it's a big deal. Like, it's no big deal, man. You can have a little drink there. What they're trying to do is to get you to open your mouth and admit you had one or two with dinner. And now what do you think is going to happen? They're getting you out of the car. They're going to have you perform field sobriety tests that most people are going to fail, even if you're completely stone cold sober, because you're nervous. And as a result of that, that can be the basis for a potential arrest for a DWI. Don't be tricked by the police. Remain silent if you can. Number six, the police must have a good, valid reason to search your car. Now, we know this, but the Fourth Amendment provides that we are to be free from unreasonable search and seizures. As a result of that, the police must articulate a basis to search your vehicle, and it must be established based upon probable cause. So we want to get into the reasons why it's important how you respond and how that affects an officer's right to be able to search you or your vehicle. Be aware of the fact the police are never going to ask you this way. They're not going to say, hey, can I have consent to search your vehicle or your person? They're never going to say that. They're going to say, hey, man, oh, that's a cool looking bag. You mind if I take a look at it? Or, oh, hey, what's this? Let me check it out. They're not going to say it in a way that sounds like it's a legal authority that they're asking you to give consent. They're going to do it in a very casual way. You need to be aware of the fact some of the language that they're using can sometimes sound confusing and officers will claim under a good faith exception that they believed you gave them consent to search. Another good example of this is I've seen officers say, hey, do you mind popping your trunk? Or hey, let me check out your phone. That's a cool picture. This is another technique that I've seen them use in order to be able to gain access to something and claim you gave them consent. This is why it's critical when an officer starts snooping around in your car or on you. The first thing you need to say is, officer, I understand, but I do not give you consent to search me or my vehicle in any way whatsoever. 
because this happens very frequently where an officer will look into a, a car or maybe they'll claim, hey man, pop your trunk for a second. I see something back here. I wanna check out your back light. And then someone pops the trunk and now they find a little weed in the back and now that person's going to jail or it's being used as a pretext to do a further search on the vehicle. So when you start feeling a little uncomfortable, the only thing you have to say is, officer, I do not give consent for you to search me or my vehicle. Here's a crazy one. In fact, some courts have held that your body language can actually give consent to an officer. It's unreasonable to believe this. You can't imagine that this would be the case, but an officer could actually, and there have been cases that establish this, look at how you respond to them like, uh, like, hey man, you mind if I take a look in your car? And someone responds kind of like, but they don't say anything. So what does the officer do? He immediately starts searching in the vehicle, even though the person was still thinking about the answer. And as a result of that, courts have upheld that your body language can be used as a basis to provide consent to an officer. So you have got to be careful about what body language you use and any nonverbal cues that you might use that an officer could decide that he believes you're giving him consent. You might say, but what if they go ahead and search my vehicle and I tell them not to? Whatever you do, remain calm. And I want you to understand something. Do not escalate the situation to a point where now they're going to arrest you for either resisting arrest or you end up getting hurt and end up becoming a victim of some type of brutality incident because this is where things can get a little out of control. Remember, exercise your right, say no to the search, and then you can fight it in court. Number seven, you are not required to take field sobriety tests if an officer requests you to do so. Now listen, this happens a lot. Officers are out patrolling, looking for DWI arrests. They'll pull you over some for some ticky-tack traffic stop. Then they're gonna ask you to get out of the car and perform field sobriety tests. I do want you to understand field sobriety tests are not designed to show that you're not intoxicated. They're actually designed to incriminate you. Two out of the three tests are physical tests that if you're nervous, you have a disability, you're overweight, you name it, that everyone will fail those tests regardless of whether they've had anything to drink or not. So I want you to realize everything you can say and do will be used against you. So you have no obligation whatsoever to take those tests. You can politely tell the officer, I am not intoxicated and I will not be taking those tests. Number eight, know your rights if the police officers are asking to search you or your property. I say that because if an officer comes up and they want to search you, particularly your person or your property, the first thing you want to say is that I do not consent. But what if there's a chance the officer believes he has a legal right to search you and now he proceeds forward? What do you do? An officer always has the right to check for outstanding warrants and if they can articulate a basis for officer safety, they can do a pat down of your person to determine if you have any weapons. Here's the key though. It's very limited. It's not like they can search everything and anything on you. They can't go looking in your shoe for a gun, okay? It's limited to the scope of what they're looking for as it relates to officer safety. However, if they do find something on your person when they're searching for a weapon, they can use that against you. What if you think they don't have a legal right or probable cause to be searching you? Remember, the time to fight the issue is not there on the roadside. I see this happen all the time where someone will say, I don't give you consent to search me, don't touch me, what do you think's gonna happen next? The officer's now going to arrest them for <laughs> resisting a detention. And so they're gonna throw them to the ground, slap them in handcuffs, they're still going to end up being searched, but now they're also gonna take a ride to the jail and be charged with a misdemeanor resisting arrest. We know that the Fourth Amendment protects us from an unreasonable search and seizure, but remember, that has to be litigated in court. This is really important. Officers can do what they want to do on the side of the road, but whether or not that can be used against you is a whole nother story. The key issue here is you don't want to make matters worse. So always stand and invoke your rights, fight the rest of it later. Number nine, you can record your traffic stop. In fact, recording your traffic stop can help you immensely if you end up in court. In fact, I have found that many times when people will record their traffic stop, it will put an officer in a place where they'll adhere more towards the guidelines and not abuse some of the things that they may do on a regular basis. So you're going to be able to show that you're acting professionally and reasonably. And if an officer decides to take it to another level and do something that's illegal or not permissible in court, you're now going to have video proof. 
It's no longer your word versus the officer's word. You actually have proof of it on video. However, like anything else, be very careful when you do this. You want to be able to make sure and let the officer know, officer, I am recording this interaction. I hope I wanted to make sure and let you know that. Because if you're not careful, sometimes I've seen people pull something out very quickly and they look to record it. And now the officer freaks out thinking you're trying to grab for a weapon and things can escalate very quickly. Another important thing to remember, just as a video recording can help you, it can also hurt you. I've seen some people try to record their encounter and actually they ended up recording something that didn't help them at all. So it's really important to understand if you're going to do this recording, you're doing it in order to keep the police officer accountable and to make sure everything goes according to the law. What if the officer gets upset that you're recording the encounter? What if they demand you either stop recording or they want to be able to demand you to delete the recording? I want you to understand an officer cannot do that. They cannot without a valid search warrant. They cannot, they cannot actually take your phone from you and they certainly cannot make you delete it. So it's really important to understand all that's going to be recorded as well. If they overstep their bounds on that front, remember you can use that as evidence. In fact, if the officer starts telling you to stop recording or to delete the recording, or if they want to take it from you, remember, stand on your rights. Let them know you absolutely have a right to do the recording and you are not doing anything illegal. And yet, if they do try to seize it from you or if they get forcible with you, do not fight them over it. If you do, you could end up being charged with an assault of a public servant. You could end up spending not only the night in jail, but you could end up with a felony charge. Finally, number 10. You have a right to fight your case in court, but not on the roadside. Look, the reality of it is you could do everything right during your traffic stop and still end up having your rights violated and end up in jail. If you refuse to be searched and an officer does it anyway without probable cause, don't fight them. It'll only get worse. Remember, the time to fight this is with hiring a good criminal attorney that's experienced and gets good results and what we're talking about here and not try to fight it on the side of the road. Your attorney can file a motion to suppress, argue to the judge that the police officer's activity was illegal and that enhances the probability that your case could be thrown out in court. The fight is always in court, not on the roadside. So those are 10 quick rights that you need to be aware of and help yourself remember, if you get into an encounter with a police officer, it doesn't have to turn out badly. Just know your rights and exercise those rights.